we are back again with another uh, spotlight series for OVAS projects. And today we have a very, very special project with us. That's OVAS core rule set project. And we have uh, Chris Polini with us. Uh, he's one of the uh, security engineer from Switzerland. And uh, he's also uh, the leader for core rule set. And I would uh, give it to um, Chris to talk a bit about uh, himself and then a bit about the project. Yeah, hi. Thank you, Madonna. Thank you for having me. Uh, good fun to be in this series. So uh, my name is Christian Fellini. As Madonna said, I'm a security engineer from Switzerland. I'm a co-leader of the OVA Smart Security Core Rule Set together with uh, Walter Hopp from the Netherlands. I'm running this project. It's actually a fairly old project. So we have, we're like 13, 14 years old. And four or five years ago, we relaunched the project under new leadership. This is when Walter and I came in. And we released uh, a major release, CRS3. So CRS is short for core rule set number three, where we overhauled the whole thing. And it's been running very smooth ever since. Community is growing and we're expanding our user base a big deal. So what are we actually doing? What was this all about? Core rule set is a set of security rules that you use on a web application firewall. By default, uh, people are using this on mod security. So you have a WAF engine, mod security, and then you need to configure it somehow. The WAF by itself doesn't do anything. You need the security rules on top. And this is where the core rule set comes in. There are a couple of commercial alternatives to this, but other than that, the core rule set is, is the global leader for web application firewall rule sets. We have a very big user base. The biggest content delivery networks have an offering with CRS. Uh, all the major cloud providers have, have an offering with CRS. So you get it out of the box and you can put it in front of your services very easily. Uh, CRS is meant as a first line of defense. This is also our claim. We're not claiming we're protecting you 100%. And no WAF can do that because we don't know about your application. But what we can provide is a baseline security and all the petty stuff is gone. The simple SQL injection, the simple cross-site scripting will be picked out by our rule set. And you can then concentrate on the real attacker, the more advanced attackers. And you could say, well, these are the dangerous ones. Why don't you take out the dangerous ones? And we'll make it live a more harder for dangerous ones, which is probably meaning that they'll go to the shop next door. So they probably leave you alone because CRS makes it hard for them to attack you. And, uh, and it also means that your log files will have a lot less attacks in them because we're going to, to filter them out. Uh, a problem that comes with web application firewall, I'm not hiding this, is false positives. Because we don't know about your application, we might flag something as an attack, which is perfectly legitimate. Traditionally, this has been a huge criticism of web application firewall, and it still is. And it has been a real problem for us. But the relaunch of the project as CRS3 was the moment where we concentrated on false positives. So we tried to eliminate 95, 99% of the false positives. We succeeded in that. So when you install CRS out of the box, a default installation nowadays, you're pretty well off. So it basically the application will continue to run, but there are a few rough edges. They're going to be false positives that you need to handle. And that is perhaps still the biggest problem with the rule set. But other than that, we have very bit uptake. A lot of users are using this. We're running on probably over 100 terabit per second globally. So the very, very big content delivery networks are using this, I'm not mentioning names here, but all the big names have a CRS offering. Some of them enable this by default on all of their users. So things are looking very good, but where it's not looking so good, we don't have a lot of uh, support for our project. So we're, we're a bit of, we're a volunteer driven project and we do this in our spare time. And what we're really looking for now is sponsored and really people supporting our project and giving back to the community a bit because many big vendors are really earning money with our stuff now and we would encourage them to actually return some of that to our project we could definitely do with that right now so that is yeah. a bit the situation we're in now 
<laughs> totally, Chris. Uh, uh, Christian, that it's very important to give back to the community when you're taking so much help from these kind of projects, which are there to help people and organizations securing their applications. Now, um, Chris, one more question around uh, like how uh, this project can help uh, the startups, like they, how they can pick up uh, the core rule set and start using for their applications because they don't have a lot of budget, don't, don't have like a huge amount of resources available. So how they can pick up this project and uh, start using it? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, let's look at the startup situation in detail. So as a startup, you, you have a business idea, you have a core service that you develop quickly, you want a quick release, you want to attract users, and you usually don't have time to invest a lot of resources into security. So what you need is an 80% solution, uh, something that takes all the default stuff and gives you very good return on investment. It needn't be perfect probably, but it should get you started and get you a long way. And CRS is perfect for that. Uh, our default installation is a five minute installation on a virtual box. So that's really super simple, two, three steps, you're, you're good to go. And the sooner that you install it, the sooner you can handle the false positives. I mean, if you're a huge shop with uh, lots, a lot of application stuff, legacy stuff, and then you're bringing CRS, then it's likely something's going to break. And then you need to tune this, and that, that's real work. But when you start from the beginning saying, look, the security we're doing on our web service right now is CRS, and this is going to be like this for one or two years, then you start from the beginning, you handle false positives as they pop up, you integrate this into your CI CD pipeline, so you see them immediately that there is a false positive because your trust traffic is running through the filter, and if it's blocked, then you need to tune it away or change your code a bit, and then you're good to go. So this uh, takes you a very far with really on cheap. I mean, this is an open source project. This is done for free. There is a very good documentation online. There are step-by-step -step guides how to integrate this, how to tune away the false positive, what to do. And we have a very active community that's ready to help there. So I would say oh, for yeah. a startup, it's just perfect. <laughs> Yeah, totally. Absolutely. And you mentioned a good point about uh, false positives that once you start using it, you get to know what are the false positives for you because those are unique for you. And uh, you have uh, different sorts of applications wherein you're going to place uh, WAF and you can put it into your CICD pipeline and start using it, which can really help. And now when people are talking about zero trust, WAF is again playing a role there and uh, uh, st uh, people have started talking about that, how they can implement WAF. And instead of uh, spending so much money on the commercial products, how about starting with um, core, um, like this project and then go ahead and start uh, understanding your uh, applications, go ahead and buy the commercial product. What do you say? Yeah. Uh, wonder if you still need a commercial product. But what a WAF really gives you, and especially Mod Secure and CRS, give you is a lot of insight into your application. Very often you develop it with a framework, which is great, but you don't really know what is happening on the wire. What, what, what requests are going there? When are they coming? And what numbers do you have? And with the WAF, you get much better insight into that. So you also get to learn your site pretty well. And you know what going to know what normal traffic looks like and what bad traffic looks like. So it's quite a revealing experience. And uh, I think the solution is so lean, you can plug it in anywhere. So it's really helpful for a, for a zero trust setup because you can put it in your network in front of all the online services that you provide when they talk to each other. You can fairly easily plug in CRS there to, uh, to uh, make sure that only good traffic happens between the, the services and lateral movement becomes much, much more difficult for an attacker. So for, for every hop he has to fight and you, the same waff over and over again, and that makes it so much harder. And the idea is the attacker is going to give up in the meantime. So I think zero trust is absolutely the right uh, step in the right direction. And we can, you can take us with you because we're supporting you in that situation, being an enterprise, being in the startup. We're ready there because we're very, very flexible with our project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. So uh, one request for everyone who's listening to this uh, uh, Spotlight series, 
please do support the core rule set. It's one of the very important project for web application security. And uh, uh, do help, you know where to reach. Go to ovas.org, mod security core rule set. And under that, you can go to GitHub, you can start supporting the project. You can support in any way possible. So uh, Christian, do you want to just spotlight on uh, or uh, throw some light on what, uh, what are the ways people can contribute to the project? Okay, um, we, uh, we really love feedback and we need feedback and feedback that we're getting is very often feedback of all, about false positives. So people use our stuff and then they bump into false positive. Look, we have this application, it works fine, we installed your stuff and suddenly on that form, it doesn't work so well anymore. We get a lot of that and then we try to handle it. Uh, we try to tune our rules in a way people are no longer affected. Uh, what we're also working with is communities uh, helping us support their software better. Uh, examples are content management system. We have a WordPress customization package where we know that WordPress does certain things, namely for the administrator, that we alert, that we think this looks like an attack. So we provide a tuning package for WordPress. And uh, we have like a handful of these tuning packages, one for Drupal, there's one for PHP, DocuWiki, Nextcloud, et cetera. But we would like to do more of these. And these uh, software development communities, these open source project, when they work with us, they provide the know-how about their software and we bring the WAF know-how and together we can make it easier for people to run CRS in front of their software. So this is something that anybody can join in from a different project. And then we're like uh, 10 or 12 active developers in our project. We write rules, we tune away false positives, we look into new stuff, we try to ease the deployment, make it easier for people. We do documentation, we do presentation, guides. Uh, basically anybody is welcome to join us. And I think we're quite a, a happy little bunch of open source developers. Uh, yeah, channels perhaps, yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, we're on the OWASP website. We have a separate website under coralset.org. Uh, we have a GitHub, uh, obviously, where you report your issues. We run, a, we run a, a mailing list, and we're on the OWASP Slack channel. We have a channel, uh, Coral Set, and we're also keeping an eye on Stack Overflow from time to time. So these are like the channels how you can reach us. Yeah, there we are. Well, security testing guide. Good project, by the way, but one <laughs> further below. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the one you can make it here as well. Exactly. So this is our logo and there is the link to coralset.org. And these are the best entry points as far as documentation is there, the getting started tutorials. We have a blog, we have a few videos. Yeah, this is installation, really nice. et cetera. Yeah. Or it's standard stuff. I mean, what do you expect yeah. from a project? <laughs> but it could be more. It could be more. <laughs> I, I totally agree with you. It could be more. And we <laughs> all need support from the community. So please do support this project or this project. And it's very, very important to have contribution from the community to make it bigger and uh, more fruitful for the organizations. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. So thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, we'll see you in the next Spotlight project.